and my friends, we're picking up where we left off in part one of this week's Q&A on Thursday. If you have not seen part one, of course, I will make sure to link it down below for you. I think it was a great chapter in our Q&A series, even if I say so myself. It was all about designer fine jewelry, sharing my thoughts about popular brands like Cartier and Von Cleef, what pieces are worth investing in and which ones I would personally not spend my money on at this point. We talked about the best and worst pieces to buy from the RMS jewelry line and why I think it is one of the best designer houses to explore when it comes to fine jewelry. So if you ever wanted to know anything about designer fine jewelry, that might be a video that you want to give a watch. And then today we're going to be chatting all about RMS, mainly my shopping tips and tricks when it comes to exploring the secretive world of RMS. So if that sounds interesting to you, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet and keep on watching. White residue appearing on Togo leather, it's not glue, which is a topic I am extremely familiar with. I don't actually know why that is, but it's happened to almost every single one, not almost every single one of my Birkins in Togo, yet it's never happened to a Kelly bag of mine, which I think is just a coincidence. It has nothing to do with the back style, but if you see this happening, I think it is something that usually happens to Togo bags you shouldn't worry about it. It's simply just the fat coming to the surface from the leather. It will usually happen along the stitches. So if you notice some little spots or little patches of white around the handle or around the top part of the bag, there is nothing for you to worry about. It is genuinely just the fat kind of separating. And the reason it will happen along the stitching is because those are little channels created in the leather that will allow this fat to be extracted from the leather itself. It's something that can really easily be fixed by an RMS craftsman. So you can, of course, take your back to RMS and leave it with the spa. And it's something that they will be able to get rid of for you. Some people even take a hair dryer at home and slightly heat the leather. And then that should, in theory, allow you to just wipe that little residue away. Personally, I would not take a hair dryer to my bags. I will leave that to the experts, but it's your money, it's your back, you can do whatever you want. Personally, I will leave anything and everything to the experts themselves. But what I'm trying to say here is that it's really not an issue if it happens to a Togo bag, it is really, really normal. In fact, I can show you one of my Togo bags in this video, which still has some of the residue left behind. But again, it's something that can really easily be fixed but don't be surprised if it comes back in the exact same spots. It is just some of the fat from the back coming to the surface. This question is quite relevant considering that winter is upon us, which is Hermes scarves for men. Recommendations, any tips? Thank you. So of course, Hermes has a huge, beautiful range of scarves that they offer both for men and women. Obviously, scarves are unisex, so you should buy whatever brings you joy. Personally, I'm not a silk scarf kind of guy. So when it comes to, to scarves for men from Hermes, I tend to go for their mufflers, their cashmere mufflers, which I have in two different colors. They do do them in one solid color, but the ones that I have are in the so-called Verso design, which means that they are a different but complementary color on each side. So I have one that is black and blue, which is noir and marine. And then I have one, which was my first cashmere muffler from Hermes, which is black on one side and then gray on the other. They are some of the most beautiful, soft, plush, luxurious cashmere scarves. So that is a must in your collection. And then for this upcoming season, they're also doing this really cool kind of, how would I explain it? It's kind of like a body warmer, but also a scarf. It's kind of a two in one. So it goes across your shoulder, but then it turns into kind of a high neck collar. And then I think it also features a zip pocket. It is really cool. I don't think it's going to be everyone's cup of tea, but if you're looking for a really interesting accessory that is a scarf, but is a little bit more than just a plain old scarf, 
that might be something that you also want to look into. And then they're also doing a really cool Exlibris sprint for full winter that is part of the men's collection in silk with these really fun frayed edges, which is by the way, the same print that you will find on some pieces of ready to wear for the current full winter season. So when it comes to silk scarves, the Exlibris print is the one that I would go for. The cashmere mufflers I think are a must have, not only for men, but also for women, anyone who is looking for a really warm, beautiful, cozy, luxurious silk scarf could take advantage of the Hermes mufflers, which come in a huge range of different colors. I have a rendezvous at Hermes tomorrow. I'm wondering how to ask for a mini Kelly gently and subtly. Well, that's a great question. Obviously, I asked you guys for questions a couple of weeks ago, so you can let us know in the comment section how your appointment went. I hope you had a great time. But if I got to your question on time, I would have said that you should just express your interest for this bag. I don't think there is any point in playing games. If it's a bag that you genuinely want to add to your collection, you've been shopping with the same brand, you have a great relationship and a rapport with your local boutique and your advisor, I would just express your interest for that bag and just say, hey, you know, I've been buying Hermes for a little while. I really enjoy the brand and I feel like I'm ready to take the next step. The Mini Kelly is a bag that I love the look of. Could you please share a little bit more with me about the process of putting in a wish for a bag? Is it something that I can just express my wish for? Is it something that I have to be invited to ask for? And just ask about the overall process. If you're a little bit too shy to just ask for a bag straight up, try to get a little bit more information about the process itself because obviously I can tell you and share with you my experience I don't work for Hermes, I don't work for your boutique, so your best source of information is always going to be your advisor. So if you cannot ask for a back straight up because it's too intimidating, which I completely understand, I would ask about the overall process of getting a bag, just ask for the policy, ask them if there is a certain benchmark you have to hit, if you have to shop with the brand or the same person for a certain amount of time, to qualify for a bag, you can ask about the wish list process. Do they go by wishes? What are you allowed to put in a wish for? When are you ask, When are you allowed to ask for a bag? Is there a certain period when wishes are allowed and wishes get submitted? So just ask about the overall process itself if you cannot, if you don't feel the confidence to ask for a bag straight up, but I don't think there's anything wrong with expressing your interest for a certain bag. So please let us know how your conversation and how your appointment went. But I would have told you to just ask about the overall process and try to get a little bit more insight into the workings of your local booty. So we have two questions here that are kind of connected. I would love to know what size of Birkin or Kelly I would need to fit a 14 inch MacBook Pro inside. I I think I do have the 14 inch Mac and I think it fits into a Birkin 35 or a Kelly 35. So you would have to go for a size 35 or a 40. And then the next question after that is, is it true that a Kelly is not as sturdy as a Birkin? So I shouldn't carry a laptop in it. Well, I'm not sure if that is a fact that a Kelly isn't as sturdy as a Birkin, but I know exactly what you are referring to because the Kelly, when it comes to a Kelly bag, obviously you are relying on a single handle instead of two handles. And the handle is actually attached to the top part of the bag. Whereas when it comes to the Birkin, the handles, the two handles, so you have two handles to kind of distribute the weight, the handles themselves are actually attached to the body of the bag. So while I never thought thought about it this way, I guess it is true. I wouldn't pack a Kelly. I wouldn't feel as comfortable about packing a Kelly bag as I would a Birkin. Like I never felt that a Birkin, I couldn't, you know, put everything into that I need. But when it comes to a Kelly bag, I am definitely a lot more conscious, especially because I tend to carry my Kelly bags open, which I definitely would not, you know, have my Kelly so full that it's bursting at the seams because you don't have that much control over the bag or it at least doesn't feel like it. So I guess it is true if you really want to pack a bag, if you really want to use it as a workhorse bag, I think a Birkin you would have an easier time not only using because it is an open style tote. But yeah, I guess it is true. It does feel a little bit more sturdy, not that a Kelly bag would fall apart, 
but I do feel that a Birkin is a little bit easier to put to work. Have you seen already the Kelly Mini Pocket Messenger bag? Are you referring to the Kelly Multi Pocket to go in box? No, I have not. I have just talked about that bag in my last What's New from RMS, so I will make sure to link that up here. I have not seen that bag in person, but I am not a fan, and if you want to find out why that is, that review of mine will be listed down below and also up here in the corner. And if you don't know what it means when I say it will be listed down below for you, all you have to do is go underneath this video and open up the description box. And at the very bottom of the description box, all the corresponding videos are linked down there. So if I ever say I'm linking something up here, you can either click, there's a little icon of, I think there's a letter I in there for information up in the corner here, you can either click on that and that should bring up all the videos that I am referencing. Or if you don't want to click on those while you're watching, you can just open up the info box, scroll down to the very bottom of it and there should be all the videos linked down there. So you can find that review of mine down there. But I did look at the Kelly Messenger bag, which is not a mini bag, but the Kelly Messenger bag, which I think was on the runway for full winter for man, was it for full winter or spring, summer? I can't remember, but there was this Kelly bag that was a messenger bag designed for men with these two pockets on the side, which I don't like. It reminds me of a diaper bag. I was asked if I would be interested in that bag and I immediately said no, because I am not a big fan of that particular. And then the next question is, will the required pre-spend for a quota bag increase when Hermes comes with the annual price increase which is going to be early next year. Note the required, the required pre-spend never changes. It's just indicative of how much you can spend, but there isn't a set number that you need to hit in order to qualify for asking for an RMS quota bag. I know some people take it pretty seriously with this one-to-one, one-to-two, saying that you know you have to spend at least the price of the quota bag that you're asking for at RMS before you're allowed to ask for one. I know that some countries take it more seriously than others, but personally that has not been my experience ever in the past 10 years. I There have been times I spent a lot more than one-to-one -one, or also times when I spent a lot less than one-to-one -to, -one to get my hands on a bag that I really wanted. So no, the pre-spend never changes. I would not really stick to it. I would not overthink it or worry about, you know, spending an additional $100, $200, $300 just so you can ask for a bag, buy things that you're genuinely interested in and don't spend on things that you don't really want just so you can hit this target that you have in your head because it really will not make that big of a difference. Explore the brand, explore as much of the brand as you want to and buy things that genuinely bring you joy. But know that number only exists, I think, in most people's heads. And if it helps you, you know, to have a number in your head or have a budget that you're willing to spend, that's great. But I would not really seriously try to stick to it. What not to do or say at RMS, which is such an interesting question. So, what are the things that I personally would not do at RMS? What are the things that could potentially get you blacklisted? So the first thing that I would not do is obviously, I mean, it goes without saying, but I would not buy things in bulk with the intentions of reselling. Obviously, RMS doesn't like resellers. Now, if you have something in your collection that you bought, you tried, you wore, and you realized it's not for you, I don't think there's anything wrong with rehoming it, but ordering things in bulk, buying things in bulk, that is not something that Hermes will appreciate. So I would not really talk about anything like that. And it's not something that I would do, which is kind of understandable. Hermes, of course, wants their pieces to go to people who will appreciate them. And there are things that will not work out for you. And there is nothing wrong with that. Another thing that is extremely frowned upon and can get you and your advisor in a lot of trouble is playing, trying to play the RMS system. So some people will have multiple profiles under multiple different names. So obviously if you travel a lot, you will have a different profile in different countries because the RMS system is not worldwide yet. The only thing that they're able to see is your quarterback purchase history, but they cannot see every single one of your purchases just yet. And I tried this myself. I tried this in Spain. I tried this in Italy. I asked my local boutique when they have tourists coming in and they cannot see every single one of your purchases just yet. 
I experienced this firsthand. I know some people will say otherwise online, but until my boutique tells me that no, now we can see every single purchase worldwide, I will stick to this because this is what I have seen and this is what I know firsthand. So they can see your quarterback purchases, but they cannot see every single purchase that you made worldwide. So I'm not talking about having multiple profiles well, I'm not talking about having different profiles in different countries. What I'm talking about here is having multiple profiles within the same country. So I had friends when I lived in New York who had a profile with the medicine boutique. They had a different profile with the boutique in meatpacking. And then they had a third profile with the boutique in FIDI, or they had a different profile with different boutiques in different states, which is not allowed. Now you might be wondering, how can people do that? Well, some people have maiden names. For example, I have a first name, a middle name, and a last name, GPS. Obviously, those are my initials. So I could, in theory, have a profile under my first and my last name, and then I could have another with my middle and my last name, or which, by the way, is not allowed and is extremely frowned upon. It can get you in a lot of trouble and also your advisor. So I would not try to do that. Some boutiques, the only way around this system, which will not work across the board, certain boutiques will let you do this, others won't, but some boutiques will let you have your own profile and they will let another member of your family have theirs. So if you're married and you have a husband or a wife, they will let them have their own profile but other boutiques will say that, you know, you can have your own profile. We can either merge them or you can have the two profiles running, but we will only assign bags to one profile out of the two. You can choose which one you want. So it's something that you have to ask about, but some boutiques will let you get bags on pro both profiles, which basically doubles your chances of getting a bag, not your chances, but your bandwidth of how many bags you are actually able to get. But other stores will say, you no, know, you have to choose which profile is going to be your primary profile. And some will even merge the two accounts into one. So it's something that you have to ask about, but I would definitely not recommend that you try to have multiple profiles running. Another thing that I would not do at RMS is be demanding, be rude. I mean, I think it should go without saying, but it really doesn't. I have seen some pretty horrific behavior at RMS. Even in Milan, when I was in Milan, it was funny because when I was editing those vlogs, I could hear it in the background of the vlog. There was this, I want to say gentleman, but he did not act like a gentleman. He acted like a little boy who was throwing a tantrum because I think he was trying to buy a pair of bouncing sneakers in gray. He asked about it the day before, but they no longer had it when he went back. They only had it in different colors and he was screaming. In fact, he had to be escorted into a private room because he was so loud, so rude and so inappropriate. So I have seen some pretty horrific scenes. There was another time, this was years ago at the medicine boutique at the women's department when they still had two stores across from each other. I remember seeing this lady, she was carrying a large, I think she was carrying like a Birkin 35 in shiny croc in red. I even remember that. And she was screaming at the top of her lungs saying, I know you have bags in the back. Bring me a bag right away. I need to speak to the director. I've been buying RMS for this and that many years. I have spent, I don't know, half a million dollars at RMS. I need a bag right now. I know you have them in the back. And of course she had to leave empty handed because no one's going to get, you know, nice treatment after they act that way. So, you know, try to be nice, I think. All of you guys who watch me are going to be incredibly nice, but do not be demanding, do not be rude. And also another thing is do not compare yourself to others because I think that is kind of an ick for a lot of people working at RMS. When someone goes into a store and they say, you know, I have spent this much money, but I have a friend who has only spent a fraction of that and they already got a bag. When you can never be fully aware of other people's circumstances, you don't know what they asked for, when they asked for it, and if you are going in thinking that, you know, you have spent the most amount of money, that is usually not going to be accurate unless you're clearing shafts on a daily basis, because I can guarantee that there is someone else out there who has spent as much as you have and who has been on the wait list a lot longer than you. So it's something that I would be really careful with, you know, drawing comparisons and 
of relying on other people's experiences because each and every single person's experience is going to be slightly different. Not to mention that Hermes is not a brand that has a huge stock of each one of their bags. So let's say if a friend of yours got a bag yesterday, it doesn't mean, well, in fact, it's quite likely that they won't have that very same bag sitting in the back the next day too. So comparison is not something that will get you far with Hermes. And then the last point I wanted to make is overthinking what you're wearing to Hermes. I hear so many people debating whether you should or you shouldn't wear Hermes when you go to a new boutique or when you go in to ask for a bag. And I always say, or I always think that at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if Hermes is genuinely your style, if you would be wearing Hermes anyway, why not wear and enjoy the pieces that you already have in your collection? But if you're just randomly throwing pieces of Hermes on to prove that you're a serious client, I think that's a tactic they can smell from a mile away and it will look out of place anyway if it's not genuinely part of your style and you have a mix matched outfit because you're just trying to put as much Hermes on as you possibly can it will just make you look like a Christmas tree, not someone who genuinely spent time consciously curating their Hermes collection. So wear whatever you would like. I don't think it would make a big difference. In fact, I can tell you from my personal experience, I have been to Hermes boutiques around the world when I was traveling, wearing head to toe Hermes and a special Hermes bag and didn't get the most outstanding treatment. But then there have been times when I randomly walked into an Hermes store somewhere and I was wearing a pair of jeans and a plain old t-shirt and got the most outstanding, most respectful treatment ever. So I really don't think that it matters. It just comes down to your personal style, but I don't think it is going to be a deal breaker at the end of the day. And my friends, this brings us to the end of this Q&A discussing some of my best Hermes shopping tips. I hope you enjoyed it and you got something out of it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.